welcome everybody who is here tonight. One of the things I would like to ask you to do is if you could go to the chat and type your name in the chat so that we can just keep track of who is in this meeting. Um, that would be great. Um, I'd like to give some more information. The Family to Family Network is a statewide parent support network run by volunteers. It is designed to educate, strengthen, and support families of persons with disabilities, especially those who are on the waiting list or in services with the Division of Services for People with Disabilities, um, which is DSPD. Network leaders are parents of individuals with special needs and link families to local resources, services, and disability-friendly events. The Family to Family Network is a project of the Utah Parent Center. Um, ways that the, the Family to Family Network helps is through support through local meetings, either in person or online, which would be um, like our meeting tonight, um, information and referrals, family to family support, tips on how to advocate for your family and help to families who qualify or may be eligible for services from DSPD to help and understand programs and services and how they work with service providers and support coordinators. Um, so tonight we are excited to have some individuals from the DDI Vantage program talk to us about the programs that they offer. We have Cheryl Rudy um, who works with early intervention, Carolyn Hoskins who works with Head Start and Felix Salazar who works with adult and youth services. Um, I believe Felix said that he was going to present first. Was that correct? Okay. Um, so we'd like to turn the time over to Felix to start telling us about the adult and youth services through DDI Vantage. Um, also, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat and I will help moderate those and make sure that Felix gets them to answer for you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Mandy. Um, so my name is Felix Salazar and I am the program coordinator for the adult new services program um, that is under the umbrella of DDI Vantage. So I'm just gonna get right to what we do for, uh, with our program. And so I'm gonna share my screen. And hopefully everybody can see. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Yes. All right. So um, this is just a brochure for one of the things that we do, which is supported living. Uh, and actual one of our clients, it's uh, Wesley. Um, and I'm going to kind of go through this right here. So um, some of the things that we do with the adult new services program is we provide supported living and supported employment. Um, and we'll talk about briefly here, supported, uh, supported living. Um, with supported living, um, what we do is, these are some of the services that are, they're tailored to meet the individual's needs and may include assistance and training. So this is some of the stuff that we do, personal health and safety, personal care, household organization and management, transportation to medical appointments and community events, excuse me, shopping, money management and budgeting, social self-help, adaptive and compensatory skills. Um, and then underneath these services, there are 101 other things that we also do that fall under personal health and safety, um, under personal care, under household management, transportation, money management and budgeting uh, we if the um, the client requests for us to help them to be their payee we have uh, uh, our billing department can help them pay their bills um, we just receive authorization from them and their um, social security so we can help them pay their bills uh, we help set up a budget so they have spending money to do what they want to do um, and they can purchase the things that that uh, falls within their budget to to, to buy um, health personal health and safety with a lot of our clients um, we help them with making sure that they're following a good diet um, we try to get them to exercise we make sure that their health their house is safe um, we look at everything from, do they have fire extinguishers? Um, where are their 
Um, do they have cords going underneath the rugs? Um, we look at everything that we help them with, their personal care. Um, what do they need help with? Um, we have clients that uh, use, some of them use wheelchairs, some of them uh, use walkers, Other, others just have uh, issues with walking. Um, so there's a variety of different things that fall into the personal care. Household organization and management, we help them. We show them how to um, you know, keep their home clean, apartments. Some of them have homes. Um, we help them with dishes. We show them how to uh, properly vacuum, uh, how to do laundry, um, how to be more efficient in, 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 uh, in doing those types of uh, household chores. Um, the transportation to medical appointments and community events, uh, that's a big one for a lot of them. A lot of them do utilize flex trans and the bus, but as we all know, um, sometimes that can be not very reliable or it can take a 20 minute trip and it can make it you know, a half a day trip. So it's a really valuable service that we provide for them as a transportation. Also, it allows us to be able to help them and explain to them what their medical appointment is about, um, being that uh, a lot of our clients have a hard time understanding what the doctor might be telling them, be it it's a night doctor, a dentist, or a medical doctor. So we go with them and we help advocate for them. And then we also take them out to community events, uh, things that you and I like to do, um, football games, movies, um, the farmer's markets. Um, of course, this past year with COVID, that's kind of slowed things down a bit. But uh, prior to COVID, we went on hiking, fishing. Um, some of our clients are interested in looking at cars. Um, they want to test drive cars. Obviously, they don't have license, so the staff will test drive a car. Um, we have gone, uh, um, some of them like window shopping. Some of them like to do a lot of the things that we like to do. And so it's like, again, it's just exposing them uh, to everyday things uh, and to and, and, and take them out to the community also helps to to get out that to um, to show the community that these individuals belong and that they're part of uh, our community. We help them with shopping, groceries, uh, we help uh, budget, make a list, help them look into um, food that is, uh, has some significant nutritional value. Um, unfortunately, a lot of our clients, um, you know, they don't have the best diet. So we try to help them with trying to make some good choices in regards to nutrition and groceries. And then of course, the money management and budgeting. Um, our office helps them if they choose to use us as a payee, sets a budget for them. And then we also help them with you know, if you get, they also get an allowance if they want that, you know, 20 or $40 every week that, of their own spending money. And then of course, there's the social self-help adaptive and compensatory skills. We are always working with them to be able, so they can advocate for themselves appropriately, how to speak up, how to use the skills that they already have and how to enhance them. Um, let me see here. So these are some of the frequently mm -hmm. asked. Yeah. Yes. Terry's trying to call me. Can you go out and, oh, sorry. So here's some of the questions that, um, and really common questions that people have that wanna know, you know, do I have to pay for the services provided by DDI Vantage for supported living? And so currently we do not do any private pay and everything is funded through DSPD. So if you're eligible to receive those services from the Division of Services for People with Disability or DSPD uh, or the Utah State Office of uh, Vocational Rehab, um, you don't have to pay for our services. And, and like I said, currently we do not do private pay and everything goes through DSPD. Um, supported living services, is different from supported employment and supported employment we will get into it as soon as we're done with this slide here and the supported job-based training and um, supported employment services focuses on helping those individuals uh, find and learn and how to keep a job. 
Um, supported living focuses on helping individuals succeed at personal everyday activities. So as we know, uh, there's, you know, there's us, the career person, the professional, the uh, program coordinators, it's myself, and then there's me, uh, the person that's out in everyday life. And it's the same for our clients. Uh, those of them that, those of them that have their jobs and want to be able to learn how to keep their jobs. And then the, when they're done with work, they're the, they're the everyday person. And so we work on helping them be successful uh, and, as depend, and as independent as they can uh, with the skills that they have. Um, can I receive supported employment and supported living services from DDI Vantage at the same time? And yes, we have uh, many clients that receive both. Um, and how much you and how much help you get is dependent on your budget that's set up by DSPD. Um, the Adult New Services Program, uh, which is under DDI, um, we do not dictate those hours. We are given uh, a budget of hours, and that's different for every client. Every client's needs are assessed differently. So you might have a client A might get 20 hours a week under supported living, and maybe they get seven hours a week under supported employment. And then you could have another client that only gets seven hours of supported living and two hours of supported employment. And all of that is determined by DSPD. Uh, on our next slide, we have here our rehab services. And what rehab services is, it's Voc Rehab. And these are for individuals that are looking for a job. Uh, they're not necessarily want the supported living. They might want supported living. Uh, and if they're funded for that and they choose us, uh, then they, they would be part of our program. But we do have several clients that just want uh, the opportunity to work. And so on this flow chart here, let me blow it up a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see it better. Um, what happens is the individual, the client contacts DWS, Department of Workforce Services, uh, Voc Rehab, and they apply uh, for the services that they want. Uh, then the client is assigned a rehab counselor, which is with DWS. Then the counselor then provides a client and family with a list of approved providers. Uh, one of them could be DDI Vantage. Then the client and the family, they contact the providers uh, that they're interested in. And there could be in excess of a hundred of uh, providers. And um, the family and client, uh, they interview the, the, uh, the program, the provider that they think best would fit, be a good fit for, their, for the individual. The client and the family then selects the provider, which could be the, uh, DDI Vantage. And then at that point, then the rehab counselor then will contact DDI or any other provider uh, to let them know that they've been selected. And then once the provider has been selected, then that's where we start the process of doing a, an employment assessment with them and start the process of finding a job. And some of the things that we would work on is setting them up with, um, if they don't have an email, we'll help them set up an email. Um, we will do uh, work on a resume, interview skills, um, and all the skills that they need in order to be able to obtain a job. And then once they do get the job, then what we do is dependent on the number of hours that they've been given, we go with them to work and we provide uh, the motivation uh, and the, the help that they need in order to be able to learn their job effectively. Um, and so dependent on the level of need, uh, the individual could stay on with the AYS program, with a job coach um, for three months, six months. Some of them have to stay with a job coach indefinitely due to their disability. Others, uh, I just recently graduated a, a client uh, after three months where he was able to, he was basically at about an 85% being able to do the job on his own. Um, 
And at that point, then he's able to select whatever schedule he wants with his employer and, and move on. Uh, our next slide here is what we just talked about, supported employment. And what our employment, supported employment program does, it provides the ben, de, dependable employees for a business or, 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 and, or an organization. Uh, it provides on-the-job training and ongoing support to facilitate a successful experience. It teaches the worker appropriate outwork behavior, personal hygiene, and social skills to help make the worker's relationship with coworkers a positive one. It assures that the job will be completed to your satisfaction during and after the training period. And then we're also available to answer the questions and to assist the worker whenever necessary. So as a job coach that falls under supported employment, our job is to help our clients keep their job and to teach them uh, the skills that they need to maintain their job. And also if there's any new responsibilities that they've been given at work. Uh, for example, this young man here, this is Kirk. Uh, at the time he was working at Wendy's um, and he had worked at Wendy's, I believe for 12 years uh, in the lobby. And he has a staff that works with him and he pretty much knows how to do the job on his own. And the, the staff is there to make sure that uh, all the tasks are completed, uh, but he's able to complete them very well on his own. But he does require staff uh, for the three days that he works, he requires staff there uh, on those three days for the two hours he works. Uh, it's the level of need. Then we also have other clients that don't need that much support um, they might work 15 hours a week, but only need five hours of staff support. And a lot of times that's just to check in to make sure that uh, they might be dressed appropriately, that their hygiene is good, um, to check their timesheets. So again, the level of support that they receive is dependent on their need and their ability. Um, when they're hired, they actually become, they are a, a full member of, uh, uh, of that employer, of that business. We currently have uh, clients that work for Wendy's, Noodles and Company, uh, the Maverick Center, uh, USANA, uh, for their concessions, which would be under Diamond Concessions, uh, Big Lots, um, Apollo Burger, uh, let's see, TJ Maxx, Walmart. Um, the majority of our clients that are working have kept their jobs for 10 plus years. A young lady that works for Apollo Burger, she was just recently recognized uh, for 18 years, close to 19 years of service with Apollo Burger at the same Apollo Burger. Um, and she's part of that team. Uh, she's invited to the Christmas parties, um, if there's any bonuses or anything like that, she's also uh, she's also recognized as that. So they are. Um, we we want to make sure that that they are contributing to the success of the business, and it also helps uh, them be successful. Um, what do I have to do to pay for the job training and other DDI Vantage services? There's nothing, DDI Vantage, we contract with state agencies that provide the funding. So it is uh, funding for services for our clients. So as we see the client, that's how we get funded. For those that wanna hire an employee with a disability, um, if the job is matched correctly, uh, most of our clients are very loyal and long-term employees. Um, like I say, our client that works at Apollo Burger, she's been there 18 years. Young lady at Noodles and Company has been there 15. We had another. We have another client that has been at uh, Big Lots in West Jordan. He's been there 10 plus years. So you do have long-term employees, and they're very loyal. Uh, and some of the benefits for businesses that there might also be a tax advantage for hiring an individual with a disability, uh, and that's something that they need to check with their uh, tax advisor. 
And then again, how long will the individual need support and employment? And that depends on the individual and uh, the challenges they might have. Uh, some of our uh, clients might have a physical challenge that might require them always having a staff with them, a job coach. Others might not, others might only need a check-in. So a lot of it is dependent on the client. Uh, we try to match the job to the individuals based on their abilities and work history. For some support may be required for only a few days, for others, it may be ongoing. And for our program, all the services come through DSPD. And if you don't know what DSPD is, um, this is just a quick little summary of what they do and how, what the process is like. Um, from my understanding, um, there is a waiting list for DSPD. Uh, and the wait time on average is about let me see here, it's about five and a half years. Um, but a lot of that is dependent on what money is available uh, from the legislature. So this tells you what DSPD does, provides long-term supports and services for people with disabilities so they can participate fully in their communities and in Utah life. Uh, the DSPD provides services for the following respite, family support, chore services, behavioral intervention, supported. And as you can see, it continues. Uh, not all providers provide all of this right here. And so you would need to check with each one of your providers to see what it is they, they provide. Uh, for example, uh, DDI, our adult new youth services, doesn't provide respite care. Um, post home, 24-hour um, support, professional parent uh, through my program. But there are many other programs that do. This tells you who's eligible. People with the following disabilities are eligible for services if they meet the requirements. Developmental disabilities uh, or related conditions, brain injury, and physical disabilities. And then of course, there's the intake process and the waiting list. And then, um, of course, the intake and waiting list. And if we look down here, that does say that there's a, a time limited funds for people on the waiting list, community service broker, and one time respite services. So, this is information that I got from the website. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here really quick. I might, I might not be able to. But if you go through the Utah Department of Human Services under DSPD, um, you will find more in depth, all of this information. And um, once the fun funds are available, then you are um, contacted by a support coordinator who is the one that manages the, the funds and will uh, get the individual going. Is there any questions? So, Felix, we don't see any questions right now, but I wanted to clarify the one point with DSPD. Yes. Um, at this time, I love that you've added information about DSPD, one-time funding, and things for these other points, like having folks come into services, is dependent on DSPD receiving funds through the legislative process. So having folks remember that piece of information and there is not always funding available for people to come into services or one-time funding. So if there's additional questions about these pieces, they are welcome to contact DSPD directly. Thank you for putting that information up there. That's that free statewide number that's on the screen right now. Yeah, let, I can even blow that up for a little bit. Seven number. Right or they can contact somebody with the Family to Family Network or the Utah Parent Center, and we can help families understand this really complex 
process as well. So thank you for bringing this part up again, as we can all help families understand the DSPD process. And if I can also add uh, those, uh, the best thing to do is to, and I'm not exactly sure how soon, but the sooner that somebody can get on that waiting list and to, to apply, the better, just because it is such a long, uh, it, it can be, it can be a wait. Um, and so that's kind of something that I would recommend, but yeah, definitely contacting this number. And if for some reason, somebody doesn't know where to start, please feel free to call me and I will also look it up and get you the numbers that you need. And that's it. Great, thank you, Felix, for thank presenting you. that. Um, Cheryl, were you going to go next? Yes, so, I will. Thank you. All right, my name's Cheryl and I'm a family service coordinator and I work in program services for DDI Vantage Early Intervention. And so early intervention, our, our kiddos are, we support kids zero to three, um, infants and toddlers if that have any type of developmental uh, delay or disability or a diagnosis. Um, and basically we have a variety of therapists to support the needs of the family. Um, our ultimate goal is to minimize the effects of the delay, um, thereby reducing the need for long-term intervention throughout the child's school years. Um, so what we do at DDI Vantage is we first do an evaluation to see if that child qualifies for our services. We do uh, standardized testing in all areas of development for these little kids. And then um, if they do qualify, uh, what we do is our services are a parent coaching um, education model for families. And um, when, we, when, COVID's not in, when COVID's not here, we are an in-home parent you know, coaching model. Um, and we teach the parents and give them all the skills and ideas to help their child in their home um, and around their family routines. Um, the, the evaluation is free. Once they start services, there may or may not be a fee. We work under the Department of Health under Baby Watch, and they have a very generous sliding fee scale for families, or if the family is on Medicaid, WIC, or CHIP, there's no fee for services. Um, and then as far as staff available, we have like our coordinators, of course, that coordinate the family and children, but we have child development specialists, special educators, we have nurses, we have speech therapists, occupational therapists, and physical therapists. We also are contracted with the USDB or um, the School for the Deaf and Blind. So we help kiddos that might have vision or hearing impairments. Um, and then also, as the kiddos are getting closer to three, if there's still concerns for their development, we do help transition our services to the school district and their special education program. Um, and we work, DDI Advantage works under Granite, Murray, and Salt Lake School Districts. Um, there are other early intervention programs throughout the state in the other school districts. And that's about it for now. I'd like to just play you a short video. Um, just see if there are any other questions. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just play a short video about our services.
Cheryl, can you find it? Oh, is it not playing? It's not. We can't see your screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. It looked like it was going. <laughs> I'm so it's sorry. totally cute on your screen. There we go. Now we can see it coming. All right, can you see it now? You can see it. Perfect. My name is Jennifer Kelsey. You got I'm it. the executive director of DDI Vantage, and I have been with the company for 23 years. DDI Vantage um, Early Intervention is a program, one of 15 in the state of Utah. We work with children with disabilities or delays, and the main idea is that we are going to preempt um, some of the effects of the disability. So DDI Vantage has four sites. We have the East Site, the West Site, the Tooele Site, and the Duchesne Site. We go into the home and provide services for kids in their areas of need. So for birth to three, we look at seven different domains, gross motor, fine motor, uh, expressive language, receptive language, cognitive, adaptive, and then social emotional. And we have speech therapists, we have physical therapists, occupational therapists, we have child development specialists, we have um, special educators, we have nurses, we have people, professionals of all in all different areas who go in the home and help kids walk, talk, eat. We talk about sleeping, we talk about developmentally, are they following their developmental milestones. My name is Lou Borgenick, I'm a pediatrician in Salt Lake City, I've been here for 40 years in private practice, and I've worked with DDI Vantage for 40 years. Early intervention is incredibly important because picking up a child's disability or problem, potential problem, at an early age prevents problems from burgeoning and, and growing when they're later at the age of five or something like that, and parents suddenly realize that there's something wrong which they could have picked up on earlier. DDI Vantage is probably the best program for developmental disabilities, whether they're mild or severe, because they really get to the point fairly quickly. They visit the house, they talk to the parents, they look at the kid, and they say, here's what we need to do, and here's what you should do. I'm the first person that comes in contact with the family, so I'm with the family all the way through the time that they're in the program, whether it be for a few months or whether it be for the, for the full three years. Um, and so I always want to make sure that they're comfortable throughout the process. When we go to the home and do the evaluation, that is always free, no matter what happens. If we go and um, we start services, then we talk about what the fee might possibly be, but there's a few ways that make a family exempt from there being a fee. So if they have Medicaid or CHIP, those are a few ways. Also, if they have WIC, if there is a chance that the family might have a fee, we have what we call a sliding fee scale. It's a pretty generous scale. There still is a possibility, even based on the income and the family size, that they might not have to pay a fee. My name is Mackenzie Fies. I'm a child development specialist, and I've been with DDI for almost three years. I'm Liz Farr. My son is Echo Farr, and he has Down syndrome, and we've been working with DDI for 27 months. During a home visit, we come in and kind of ask the family how things have been going, what they would like to work on, any changes or new progress that's been going on. So we started really basic, just working on object permanence, putting things in and out of containers, and now he can do all of those things and he's progressed to being able to say some words, he's signing, and he's got a really good understanding for following directions as well. My name is Megan Wall and I'm a speech language pathologist. I've been with DDI Vantage for about four years. I was brought on to the team with Echo about just a little over a year ago. So he started with physical therapy and a child development specialist. Some of our feeding goals for Echo were to help him advance his oral motor skills. So basically learn how to chew. Echo has done phenomenally well that we've passed off all of his feeding goals. So I've been able to transition into more communication, the signing, the sound production, the early word production, and all the important concepts that go into understanding language as a symbolic tool. So our goal at DDI Vantage is to work with a child and make enough improvements that they are meeting their developmental milestones and we can exit them from our program. If you don't happen to live in our area, you can go to utahbabywatch.org and find out which um, early intervention program you live in.
All right, there we go. Sorry about that slow start, everybody. <laughs> All right, are there any questions or anything about early intervention? So I do have a question about the sliding fee scale. When did that come in to play for early intervention? Has that always been in place? Um, I've worked for the company for almost 12 years and they, as far as I know, they've always had this sliding scale. Um, so, and it's, it's, it's very generous. I mean, for example, like you may have a family of four, if they make under 48,000, there's no fee. And if they make maybe from 48 to 52, it's $10 a month for services. Okay. Thank yeah, you. And, and that one thing I did not say is our typical model, since we're an education model for families, is maybe twice a month. So the therapist works with the family, you know, they talk about goals they're going to work on, and then the family will, you know, work with their child and then meet with their therapist. So that's a typical model for us, um, two times a month. Thank you. Um, if there aren't any other questions, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to Carolyn, who works with Early Head Start with DDI Vantage. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ms. Hoskins with DDI Vantage Early Head Start, the home-based program. And our family focuses on <clears throat> expected moms and children zero to three. We focus on <clears throat> getting your child socially, emotionally ready to learn. And due to COVID, we are also doing virtual visits, which are 90 minutes, but we have been flexible also uh, <clears throat> during this period and everything. Too. <laughs> we focus on getting your child socially, emotionally ready to learn. We set goals with the family, uh, asking the parents what they would like to see for their child <laughs> and everything. We also... Um, have community resources and referrals for, you have to excuse my dog, he's, he's a killer, okay, so excuse the noise back here, and then we also focus on health and safety, nutrition, education, um, family engagement, leadership opportunities for the families, early childhood literacy and reading, growth and learning and development and everything. So, um, and the family can, if they are on uh, with early intervention, they can also be on the home-based program. And the family advocate will set goals working on those developmental uh, stages that early intervention is working on with the family also. So in order to get started with me, I just need a copy of the child's birth certificate, their current immunization, and then also their proof of income for the previous year. And it's just important um, to get these children socially, emotionally ready to learn, because as we all know, you know, um, <clears throat> kindergartners, they're requiring so much more now for these kids. And we all uh, want their, uh, we all want our children to be a uh, developmental delay. I mean, excuse me, developmentally ready to learn and to get along with their peers. Are there any questions for me? So Carolyn, how would a child be referred for your services? Uh, usually I get referrals from word of mouth pediatricians are a good, the WIC program, and also just, uh, you know, previous parents also. We do have a wait list, but right now I've got like availability for five openings right now and everything. Okay, thank you. And then once they turn three, we will also give them um, resources for other programs in the uh, communities for like Utah CAP, 
which has a three, four, and five-year-old program. There's also Children's Service Society that has a four or five and four and five-year-old program, which is also home visitation also for other, and then the different, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> school systems have early childhood uh, programs too, because we all know, you know, learning doesn't stop at three. So Carolyn, I did put a question in the chat about as a young child, they can be in early intervention and early Head Start at the same time. Is that what you had said? Correct, they can be uh -huh. on both programs, uh-huh. Okay, I hadn't realized that. And I'm pretty sure we have families that don't, that hadn't realized that either. So I am excited to put that information into the, the follow-up that we will be sharing with this. So that's really great information to share. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay. And I'll be happy to get you some brochures and referral forms and everything okay. also. Is there a, a Facebook or a website that we can also add onto this information as a follow-up that's going out for families that weren't able to come on or additional resources? They go to our um, ddivantage.org and they okay. can apply online also. And I go in on a weekly basis and check that, uh, it's called our Child Plus website and um, you know, follow up with the parents and everything. Yep, and all three of our programs are listed on there. So- Correct, uh-huh. The early intervention referrals, um, they, you know, I'm one of many coordinators, so it will get assigned to a coordinator, right. all the family. Mm -hmm. And our early intervention staff were, we also, re, our staff refers to Early Head Start and Early Head Start is great. If they notice a need if with a child with uh, concerns for development um, and possibly maybe might be behind, they refer to us too. Right. Yeah, because I always ask the parent, is there any suspected delays? And uh, I fill out the referral form and pass it on and everything too. And we're also in Deshane and Tooele County also. <clears throat> and we service the Granite, Murray, and through Salt Lake City, both uh, school districts. That's great information, thank you. So are there any other questions or concerns? Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, Julia, are you gonna put up the um, survey? So I think those of us who are on are actually not eligible to take the survey. So okay. um, I think we'll, we'll gather the information from the, the folks we will be sending this out to the people who had registered, knowing that families, things change on a moment's notice. I do know that this was seen and um, interesting or interested by so many families. So we will be sending this out to those who had registered. And again, in these areas, including Tooele and Duchesne. Um, we do have networks in those two areas as well. Oh, so perfect. out of the basin and in Tooele County. So if, because it's now recorded, we would love to be able to make sure. I, I learned more things and ARSA actually had services from DDI Vantage 28 years ago. Um, so yeah, that was a long time ago and I still remember how important it was for us at that time. So 
If there's not any additional questions, are there any other tidbits each of you would like to leave us with as you're like, oh, I wish I could have said this for your areas as we it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. Keep final things about your areas of I would I would say if I may that um if somebody doesn't know exactly where to start, uh, to feel free to give me a call and I would not mind help and kind of guide them. A lot of times um, when you are working with your child has a disability, it's very emotional, you don't know where to start. And sometimes just having a unbiased individual and if it takes five minutes just to look something up on the, on the internet, just to help guide them. Um, I've received a lot of phone calls from individuals that they don't know where to start and neither do I, but I've just taken the five minutes to look things up uh, through a simple web search. And uh, it seems that that just kind of helps them. So I guess I would just say, you know, feel free to, to call DDI Vantage, to call me, uh, even if it's just to start, uh, to start the process. And both of my children were uh, Head Start kids uh, back in the day, you know, some 20, 30 years ago. And, you know, it has been, uh, you know, their trajectory to uh, their success as adults now. Thank you. Any last words from you, Cheryl? I saw that you put down mm -hmm. the Jennifer Kelsey. Um, yeah. Executive. Yep. Jennifer Kelsey is now the executive director and she's, she's amazing. So she's uh, keeping us going and, and um, you know, we love having her as our director. That's yeah, that's it for me, unless there are any other questions. Okay, thank you so much for your time tonight and for presenting for us. We really appreciate you taking the time to give us information about your programs. You're welcome. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too.